Hey, welcome to Unit 2 of the AutoCAD tutorial series. In this unit, we are going to show you what construction document sets are, how to create and organize them in AutoCAD, and give you some tips and tricks that are going to make your drafting life a little easier. First, I'd like to help you understand what construction document sets are and why they are so important. So let's get started with what they are first. Construction document sets are several large sheets of paper containing drawings and specifications that tell contractors how to build a building. Now drawings consist of things like floor plans and elevations and specifications are actually kind of like written instructions telling a contractor about the quality of materials or the types of materials they should be using in order to construct the building. Now once these large pieces of paper are signed by an architect, the construction documents become legal contracts. So any incorrect dimensions or measurements, information, incorrect specifications, drawings, any of these can cause major legal issues for any of the parties involved, being it a client, an engineer, architect, or designer. This is why it is so important for you to develop good habits and draft as perfectly as you possibly can because every detail is going to count and construction documents are all about communication. Now I remember when I first started out in the field I was so nervous about accuracy and getting everything perfect because I really didn't know what I was doing necessarily but don't worry. It is everybody's responsibility in the design team to ensure accuracy. So there's usually a three-person checkoff system that takes place, especially when you work at an architectural firm. The first person is the drafter. So drafting accurately and rechecking work once it's completed is really an important step of drafting. The next person who is checking things off is the project manager. They check the accuracy of the drafter. They make red lines if there are any mistakes that the drafter made. And then they also ensure that the project is communicating everything it needs to. The last person to check things off is going to be the architect that signs off on the project. They carry the largest amount of responsibility for accuracy and they're going to check everything before they actually sign the set. So with the three person checkoff system you can see how easy it's going to be to ensure the accuracy of the document sets. Now every firm is going to have their own standard for how to create and organize construction document sets and even within the same firm each project could look very different from one another. So it's important as you go through this series to understand that I'm showing you just one way to do it. And actually this is a great way for doing it in college um, or on your own if you're starting to learn this. But every firm is going to have you do this a different way. So it's your job to be kind of a chameleon of sorts. You got to kind of go with the flow. Whatever and whoever you're working with are going to have different standards. But what's good to know is that for the most part, all construction documents generally follow the same guidelines. And that includes the types of sheets that each of these sets contain. So there's usually title sheets, introductory sheets, uh, specification type sheets, there's drawing sheets, as well as the engineer sheets, which include the mechanical and electrical plans. Now I just threw a whole bunch of sheets at you. Don't worry about this, this series is going to take each one of these and go into much more detail about what's needed and how to create them. So let's say that you got all your construction documents done, they're printed, they're signed off on, what happens after that? Well once they're signed, several copies are actually given to the architect, to the contractor, and to the engineers. Well why is that? Well contractors could need documents on multiple floors. Engineers and architects may need to discuss documents while they're in different locations from each other. Um, and in case one copy gets damaged, they have others that they can fall back on. There's lots of reasons why there are several copies given to different people. But it's just important for you to know that once they're done, they actually get printed over and over and over again and given to various people working on the project. Now if something happens while you're out in the field and you need to make changes, the documents can actually be amended. There is a whole process for doing that. We're not going to worry about that too much, but I want you to understand that they can be amended due to any unforeseen circumstances that happen and your firm is going to have a specific method for how to go about amending those documents. Now once the project is done, it's built, it's ready, the end users are using it, they're happy, they're loving life. 
what happens to everything that you drafted is that they get stored for future use in case you need to do any future remodeling, redo the electrical work, put in security systems, whatever the need is, they get stored physically, like the physical documents, the rolled up documents that you usually see. They get stored into boxes as well as the digital files so that you can work in CAD again should you need to in the near future. And in a nutshell, that's all that you really need to know about construction document sets. But I can tell you all of this till you're blue in the face, but until you actually see what it looks like in CAD, you're not really going to understand kind of the end result of this. So let me show you what that looks like. So here I am in AutoCAD, and this is the project that we're going to be working on in Unit 2. This is a three-bedroom unit that's going to be put into a, an apartment complex of some kind. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so that you can see this is all that there really is going to be to it. There's going to be some elevations and details that's not really discussed in this video, but you will get into that in a future video in this series. But for right now, uh, this is basically what we're working with. So we're here in model space. We got notes and schedules and the actual floor plan itself. As I go in, you're going to see all kinds of stuff like here's a here's a ceiling and then there's furniture and there's all kinds of notes, lighting. Uh, doors, windows, walls, everything that you need is on this one plan. They are not copied, so this is not like the floor plan, and then we have the ceiling plan and the furniture plan. It's all one floor, and it's very colorful, isn't it? These colors come into play. They're called layers, and you can turn them on and turn them off as you need to. We're going to get into that, but I wanted to kind of show you what it looks like in model space, and then as we go into paper space, this is what it's going to start to look like. We have title blocks that have the information that we need for the project. Um, this is the title cover page, so it's got information about what the project is all about and who's working on it. The index sheet shows you where exactly the project's located. The construction plan has information about what's being built, where it's at, uh, what's going on with it. The furniture plan shows you where the furniture should be placed. Finish schedule shows you what types of finishes go into each room and where. The ceiling plan is going to show you exactly how the ceiling is configured, the lights and all that kind of stuff. And then of course there's going to be elevations and details. This is the end result of what you're doing. Notice that every sheet has different elements to it. It's communicating different information, which is really important to understand. That's what every sheet is all about in a construction document set. So like I said, Unit 2, we're going to go into specific details. We're going to help you put together a title block. We're going to help you understand what each sheet is trying to communicate and what you need to show in it and what you don't need to show in each sheet. Otherwise, in this video, you learned what construction document sets are, why they are so important, and what the end result is in terms of drafting a building in AutoCAD.